you hanging out with us. That's Tone to Shields. I am Rob Ellis on this New Year's Day. Again, hope everybody's having a great, great New Year's Day. Hope you get a chance to uh, have had a chance to relax. That's for sure. All right. Hey, so Rob, let- a question before yeah. we get into the content, I got a question yes, for you. Uh, uh, do you and the family have any uh, New Year's Eve or New Year's Day uh, traditions that you guys like to hold up? So my mom used to make sauerkraut. That was a thing. Like you do like sauerkraut and pork. It was supposed to be good luck. I, <laughs> she used to do that every year uh, on New Year's Day. And that mm-hmm. was, uh, I re- I'll never, for- I always remember that, but um, not really. You know, we, we usually do. So, uh, you know, you catch, you catch a glimpse. The tree's about to come down when the show's over. <laughs> yeah. Our tree's so coming out today too. <laughs> yeah. So just to make a little bit more space. Plus, like I said, I'm, I'm working with way less space because my whole basement's been just you know, out of commission. So everything's tight right now. So we're, we're looking mm-hmm. to take the tree down. So that's usually new year's day, take the tree down, relax. I usually, if I don't have to work, um, I get together with buddies and we watch some of the bowl games. Uh, generally okay. I can't do that today. It's yeah. Yeah. It's just not happening today, but that's something I always, uh, I always like to do, but that's about it. How about you? Um, like you, we take down the Christmas stuff. Uh, yeah. and it's so funny. You brought up the whole sauerkraut thing for like, good luck, you know, um, my, my wife grew up in the South. She's from Georgia. Um, and basically, I guess a Southern tradition yeah. is, uh, uh, what is it? Oh, uh, it's black eyed peas. Okay. Um, I saw somebody talk gre- about that in the timeline yeah, too. Yeah. 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 It's a uh, black eyed peas, collard greens, um, some kind of like uh pork or Italian sausage or something like that. Pork butts. Um, I see Nathan saying pork butts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, whatever your preferences, I guess, but pretty much, you know, greens, pretty much collard greens and black eyed peas and whatever protein you probably want to throw in there. Now, do you um, like that? Is that is that something you like? That was my first time having black eyed peas and it was pretty good. Okay. I, I yeah. love I love I love collard greens and all that all that kind of stuff, but that was my first time having uh um black eyed peas and it was it was it was pretty good. My wife made it, it was really, really good. Um oh, that's cool. So, you know, that's like a good like that's like a that's like a good luck thing as well. And also no cleaning on New Year's Day. Like no kind of cleaning or like, like we just we get did a day it all, off. Just a complete day off. I I, nice. I hear doing I hear doing any kind of cleaning on New Year's Day is bad luck as well. So oh, that's really? what I heard. That's, listen, my, my wife my wife isn't all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't so. know any of that stuff. Like all I know yeah. is like I was never a fan of sauerkraut, but so my my mom would make it, my mom, my parents would eat. I'm like no thanks, man. Just the smell of right, them. right. I was like black eyed peas. I don't know, babe. She's like, no, you're gonna try these black eyed peas. Although I will say this, uh, hot dogs cooked in sauerkraut are, are good. I think give a little yeah. taste. I don't mind yeah. that, but yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. That's cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I yeah for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm just trying to you know establish our own little traditions <laughs> here and there. So, yeah, that's what it's all about, man. That's what yeah. it's all, and and it's the goofy ones that, that always are, are the most fun, right? Mm-hmm. Or the ones that you create that are that are on your own. That's for sure. All right. So uh, where we were with this. All right. So let me give you a couple updates. So the Eagles technically can still win the NFC East. They would have to beat the Giants. Yeah, I know. Nobody wants to hear it at this point, but it's true. Um, The Eagles would have to beat the Giants and the Cowboys would have to lose to the Commanders. And, you know, anybody's been paying attention to what's going on with the Commanders. It's been a total disaster. Um, they've lost, I believe, I want to say seven in a row. And the game is at home. It's it, the, the, the NFL does this stuff on purpose, so both teams have something to play for. So the Eagles and the Giants and the Commanders and the Cowboys, the both games are at 425 on Sunday. Okay, So there is a sh- still a shot at the division. but And everything's set up, Tone. You had Saturday night, as much as it made us all sick to our stomachs, you, you rooted for – you know, the Cowboys to beat Detroit because it actually helped the Eagles in the standings or at least to try to. I I, mm-hmm. I got to tell you, I couldn't – I knew logically it was what was good for the Eagles, and, and when the game was over, it was like, okay. But it was really hard in-game to in any way, shape, or form feel good about the Cowboys doing something good, just 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 telling you the truth. So, uh, But that worked out for you Saturday. It, so you still went into this thing with a shot at the number one seed and certainly the division as well. But, all right, here's the way it looks right now. Let's start with the NFC in terms of the playoff picture. Mm -hmm. All right, number one, San Francisco clinched. It's done. Uh, They won yesterday with the Eagles' loss. Done deal. They have home field advantage. Uh, They're 12-4. and Cowboys won Saturday. Um, They win the tiebreaker over Detroit based on head-to-head win percentage because they beat them straight up. So the Cowboys and Detroit are both 11-5. and Cowboys are the two seed. 
Detroit's the three seed. They've already clinched the NFC North. Uh, Tampa Bay, eight and eight. They had a bad game yesterday. Ugh, they did not show up, but they win the tiebreaker over New Orleans based on best win percentage in common games. Okay, so they, okay. they, they hold that over them. I'll get to Tampa in a second. Then the Eagles are the five seed at 11 and five. The Rams have clinched a playoff spot. They're nine and seven right now. They're the sixth seed. Green Bay's the seventh seed. So if it ended right now, Green Bay's in because they win the tiebreaker over Seattle based on strength of victory. Uh, wins the tiebreaker over New Orleans best on w- based on best win percentage in conference games. Mm. That would be Green Bay. Uh, Seattle wins the tiebreaker over New Orleans based on best win percentage in conference games. Anyway, so you still have New Orleans with life. Seattle with life. All right. So they're, they're still in uh, Minnesota lost last night. They get trucked uh, by the Packers. So they're down to seven and nine at this point. Mm-hmm. Bears, believe it or not, are seven and nine Atlanta, seven and nine. So that that's where you are um, in the NFC. So, you know, you would figure San Fran rests everybody. You know, the other problem the Eagles have is they play on arguably, and I don't know if there's much argument, the worst turf in football on Sunday at MetLife, you know, then you got to get through that nonsense too with, with nobody getting any, an ounce of rest. So you just made your, you have made your life so much more difficult, <laughs> man. It's incredible. Isn't it? it? It's actually, it's, you know, I guess it is incredible because ultimately, right. I didn't expect this team to look this bad in certain spots. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect them to really be this, diminutive on offense and defense. I thought they would be better than what they are or somewhat more consistent. You know, I like I thought I would have a stronger sense of what this team is, and I really don't. The only thing I have a strong sense of is that this defense is awful, Mm -hmm. awful, and they can get ran on by any team any day of the week. Doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if you're the worst team or the best team. The Philadelphia Eagles defense can be had. And the only way they're going to win any games in the playoffs is if they outscore you. Don't think that defense is going to make a play or don't think that defense is going to, you know, uh, get a key stop in the fourth quarter. Don't 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 bank on you guys. You better hope the Philadelphia Eagles dominate time of possession in every single playoff game they play. Lord willing, because the defense is not going to be the reason they win. It's it's going to it's going to be every reason they lose. Right. Um, And then offense, their room for error is so slim because the defense can't stop a nosebleed. Mm-hmm. So, right now, the way the playoffs look, uh, they will be playing the Buccaneers in the first round. And like you said earlier, Jeffrey Lowry and those guys losing out on those home games, I know they are livid. Yeah. Livid. I agree. Uh, to answer uh, JT, I can't pull anybody up, but to answer his question, do I think the Eagles arrest the starter against the Giants? No, because there's still a chance that you could win the division. And you're playing at the same time the Cowboys are playing. Washington. So I don't think so. I think you're going to see the starters go full bore. This could be a full bore game, plain and simple. The other thing is you got to, you got to hope you can get something out of this game. You know, you got to wash away the taste of that Cardinals game. I mean, I know that's less important than winning the division, obviously, but that's another Mm -hmm. byproduct and offshoot of it. You got to go out there and try and play good football, which they haven't been able to do for consistent football at all. Yeah, exactly. So that's the other Um, part of it. Um, Eagles are five and a half point favorites at New at New York on Sunday. I'm not, I'm not I don't pay attention to any betting lines with the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, none, none whatsoever. They can be had by anybody. They can. So, you know, when it comes to Philadelphia Eagles, why should I why should I sit here and lie and act like I have the most faith in this team right now? When when, I'm, when in reality, I really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching that game yesterday and. I, I, I told myself they're not going to ruin my birthday. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let it happen, Rob. I'm just going <laughs> to take it easy. You know, the game almost felt like a blur. It almost felt like a dream, like it didn't really happen. That's yeah. how much I. That's how much I disconnected from it yesterday. Uh, yeah, like, it, it was one of those deals where you when you woke up this morning, if you were if you maybe went out and had a few, or stayed home and had a few, or mm-hmm. whatever, you're like, no, that really happened. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it was. I woke up this morning. I was like, oh yeah. By the way, I got to talk about these losers this morning. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny, man. Anyway, all right. So uh, let's go to the AFC. 
mm-hmm. uh, and and what this thing's looking at here because uh, same deal with the 49ers. You had the uh, the Ravens locking things up and they just blasted uh, Miami yesterday. 56 spot they put up. Um, so they're 13 and three. They're the one seed. Then you have Miami at 11 and five, the two seed. The Chiefs, who got a much needed win against the Bengals yesterday, go to 10 and six. Jacksonville, who got a win with CJ Beathard starting with Trevor Lawrence out, goes to nine and seven. Cleveland, who's done an amazing job this year, is 11 and five, but they're in second place in the North behind the mm-hmm. Ravens. Uh, so they're the five seed. The Bills, who have, have straightened their act out, are 10 and six at this point. They're the sixth seed. Then Shane Steichen, who we talked about a little bit earlier, has the Colts at nine and seven. If they, if it ended right now, they didn't have to play next week. They would be in. The Colts would be in. But you got a bunch of teams on their tail. You have uh, the Texans at nine and seven. You have the Steelers at nine and seven. So let me give you the tiebreakers here. So um, the Colts win the tiebreaker over the Steelers based on head-to-head win percentage. Division tiebreak was initially used to eliminate Houston. Indianapolis wins the tiebreaker over Houston based on head-to-head win percentage. So the Colts have the head-to-head on both of those teams. Okay. Mm. Um, Then you go to Houston. They would win the tiebreaker over Pittsburgh based on head-to-head win percentage. So Houston's got the advantage just over Pittsburgh. Indianapolis has the advantage over Houston and Pittsburgh. Um, So so Steelers lose. So, so basically, what you're saying is the Steelers, Steelers lose; they're done. They're yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're done. Um, basically, the Steelers need both Colts and Texans. Correct. Yeah, they because, need help. They need help. Yeah, it, it can't just be the Colts because if the Colts lose, Texans jump them. Right. And and even if Steelers win, they that puts them in the eighth spot, I believe. Yeah the the so, one thing the, the one thing that the Steelers accomplished yesterday for sure is the Tomlin again won't have a losing season. Right. The Jaguars are almost guaranteed a playoff spot because they won the tiebreaker over Indianapolis and Houston based on head to head win percentage. That's right. That's right. Yep. Even though the, the Colts are right there in the right. in that division, the AFC South. But yeah. Right. And uh, the Colts it was a big and the Texans win. play each other. So mm-hmm. they're going they're they're going to one of those teams Somebody's are Somebody's gonna win or lose. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And even if it ends in a tie, it would still go to Jacksonville. And guess what? Here's another thing, right? I mean, this has kind of been like a a debate on the national football show that kind of came up sometime. Mm-hmm. When Doug took the Doug took the um Jaguars out, right? Yep. So, so far, Doug is on pace to win his second division title in two years. Yep. Right. Yep. And so far, Nick Sirianni, if if everything holds true, he would have only won his division in one out of the three years as the head coach. Mm-hmm. And Doug would have won his division two out of the three years. Right. But has not gotten to a Super Bowl. Right, but it's not got the Super Bowl. So, but again, you know, I mean, you're trying to turn around the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, uh, I'm, you, know, you took over maybe you took the over, biggest uh, disaster area. Yeah, we the, the biggest disaster in football, and you won. So far, he has. Because look, at the end of the day, if you ain't got Super Bowls, you know, to match it, okay, they're looking at division titles now. How productive are you in your division? And so far, if Doug keeps this thing going, he'll have two division wins. In two seasons, uh, because this is his third season as head coach or a second, I think it's his second. Third I think, I if, thought, if, no, I think it's his second. I'm, didn't, didn't Doug, Doug, um, Nick, ha, Nick's in his third, Nick's right? in his Nick's, third. Nick's got one more than Doug, I believe. Okay, remember, okay, yeah. Urban Meyer, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. The same okay. year that 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 Nick was hired, you're right, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and and uh, he took that year off in 20, um. Peter, Doug, yeah, Doug, Doug, Doug took that year off. Year off in twenty twenty one. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if everything holds true, he would have won the division two years in a row as the. Uh, the That's head right. Coach. That's right. His only two years, he's won division titles. Correct. Yep. Right in both years, and Nick Sirianni in three years, he would have only won one. Not a good look, in my opinion. Um, well, I know. I understand Nick made it to a Super Bowl, but you didn't win it. So it's almost it's almost for naught. You know what it is, Tone. Perspective is everything. When you yeah. when you're in your first year and the team was bad the year before, and you take it over and you win nine games, get in the playoffs, even though you got smoked by Tampa, mm-hmm. that was a, that was a win. No, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, I'm yeah. saying, no, I'm saying, just fast forward though. When you get to a Super Bowl and lose by three, and the next year you limp into the playoffs like they're limping in, and and mm-hmm. have as many issues as they have. Mm-hmm. 
it's not good. It's timing. Timing in life's everything. Circumstances yeah. everything. Yeah, you're right. Timing is everything. Circumstances is everything. Context is definitely everything. Yeah, big time. Um, but you know, you know, the further we get in time, the context always gets lost. Yep. And eventually, eventually, we're gonna look back and say, "Hold on, wait." Doug, first two seasons in uh, in Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Jaguars, two division titles. Wow. Okay, like where were they before? You know, at least with the Eagles. Okay, they had that. They came off that bad year, but for the most part. You know, the Eagles have a, a, a tenured history of winning games and being relevant. Um, you know, it, it, it just it just speaks to the work Doug's really been putting in over there. And it makes me it makes me question, would Nick even survive a situation like Jacksonville? Would he be able to coach up his team enough through a turbulent situation, which so far he hasn't been able to do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it just, you know, it, again, man, um, it's a case study. It's something to watch. But. You know, it's uh, Nick Sirianni right now is a guy that I don't I don't see a future beyond a year and a half from now. It's amazing. It's amazing, man. They were in a Super Bowl. They went toe to toe with Reed and Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Up ten at the half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, stuff changes fast. Up ten at the half. Up up sixteen at the half. This is kind of a trend. Where you think I know, about it, right? You're right. Yeah, late kind of a late trend. Second half collapses. Yep. Second half collapses uh, under under Nick Sirianni's uh, watchful eye. You've had second half collapses more times than you should have when you're yeah. up by double digits and this team's too talented. It's an indictment on Nick Sirianni. It, it's a coaching it, thing. It, it has to be, you yep. know, you, you don't, you don't have an ability to close games. You don't have an ability to, to, to know what to call or what, to, or, or, or what to do in these situations where things get a little, things get a little hot. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I mean, look, and, and that's, and you look at other teams, there's no team in football this year that's been more injured than the Cleveland Browns and Stefanski got them at 11 and five, you know, in a tougher conference, it, way tougher. And Joe Flacco looks like the, the, the next coming of, of Nick Foles. Like he's just dealing right now. You know, that's why, that's why you look at Nick Sirianni and say, hold on, wait, I see these teams who are dealing with way more issues and you can't coach your way around these the ones you have in front of you. Yeah. And they're not even the most complex issues to me. Right. Um, you know, they're all within your control to a certain extent. You know, the, the Browns are dealing with the injuries and they lost quarterback at the quarterback. And somehow, some way, they're finding ways to just lean on that running game and lean on that defense and make some timely play action plays. Like, they're finding ways, man. I'm looking, I'm looking at Sean McVay doing the job he's doing. I'm looking at Ty Bowles doing, doing the job he's doing um, in Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. um, keeping that team um, above water. Um, you know, I see what Dan Campbell's doing. You know, I, I, I see what um what's the guy um Zach Taylor is it Zach Taylor and in Cincinnati in Cincinnati yeah very underrated coach by yeah the way. very underrated coach I'm seeing a guy like I'm saying I'm saying guys really coach up players in moments of chaos and Nick Sirianni's failing to do that yeah I agree he's, I he's, agree he's failing in chaos and that's and that's how you judge a man don't judge a moment in times of peace right. judge a man in times of chaos he'll show you exactly who he is yeah yeah I mean you look you've seen you go to the AFC Stefanski D'Amico Ryan's Shane Steichen, you know, awesome jobs, all those guys. And I'm taking nothing away from John Harbaugh. I mean, to have the, the third, you know, 13 and three team, it's incredible. Uh, and then you go to the NFC. I would say I didn't like the way Dan Campbell handled Saturday night. I thought he was reckless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was that was he, he, that was that was a, that was a blight on him. Um, yeah, very reckless. But but nice job generally. Again, didn't love last night. How about Sean McVay, man? The, the Rams looked dead and buried. We were about to write them off that they were going nowhere, mm -hmm. no draft picks, all this other stuff. He's got him back in the playoffs. He flipped that script really quick after that one down year, and he's got him right back in. Uh, Isn't that this crazy? Year. Yeah, he's done a he's done a heck of a job, man. He really has uh, with them. And, and you know, there, it's not that there haven't been others. I, I thought I think Matt Lafleur and Green Bay is doing a nice job. Like their future's bright. Jordan Love looks like he can really play, uh, and they have good young receivers there. They got to get some you know help defensively and some other things. But they're you know there are guys that have done really good jobs, and they've coached circles around Sirianni. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely. Um, so it's uh, it, it, there's look, there's a ton to to look at. Let's come back. We're gonna get into a bunch of things, including. The the maniac owner of the Panthers. Did you see this one? Yeah, yo, is it true that he threw a, a beverage at a fan? Allegedly, and there's video of it. So we'll 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 dive into that. We'll look at a bunch of other things uh, when we come back. So don't go 
anywhere. He's Tony to Shields. I am Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take uh, on this New Year's Day. All right, let me tell you about Flynn Tree Services. Yes, they are an experienced, licensed, and insured Pennsylvania tree services company that will trim or remove any unwanted trees off of your property. They offer cost-effective solutions to any tree problem that you may face. So if you have any types of tree issues in your yard or your property, we're just, they're just a quick phone call away. Uh, and they're experts trimming all types of trees, and they serve southeastern Pennsylvania, South Jersey, and northern Delaware. Flynn Tree Services specializes in tree removal, stump grinding, as well as tree pruning. You go to their Facebook or Instagram page for more information or a sampling of their work. Give Flynn Tree Services a call at 610 610- 850-2848, 610-850-2848, or uh, Flynn Tree Services online, flynntreeservices.com. 